Okay, this is the mind map for the mole concept chapter. Okay, first of all, we start out with the mass of an atom. An atom is very small. So the mass of an atom is going to be very small as well. And it is not practical to use it in chemical calculation by using the mass of an atom. So instead, the scientists compare the mass of atoms with one standard atom. And the, stat and the standard atom chosen in this case is carbon-12 atom. Why do we choose a carbon-12 atom? Because carbon is the most abundant element in the universe. Okay, so the mass of uh, atoms of all other elements will be compared with the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Relative atomic mass or AR. Now this is the definition of relative atomic mass or AR. Either this or this, so you have to memorize it. Now let's look at the definition. The average mass of the atom compared to 1 over 12 of the mass of one carbon-12 atom. Now why do we want why do we have this 1 over 12? Because the mass of a carbon-12 atom is actually 12 unit. Okay? Carbon-12 atom is not the lightest atom. The lightest atom is hydrogen. So for example, if you want to compare one hydrogen atom with carbon, that will be 16 over 12. Which is actually, uh, which is going to be a decimal number, but if you compare this sixteen with one over twelve of this twelve, which is one, one over twelve or twelve is actually one. So if you compare sixteen with one, then the mass of a uh, mass of an oxygen atom would be sixteen. Okay, that is why every time when you make comparison, you have to take one over twelve of the mass of a carbon twelve atom, which is actually one which is actually uh, the same mass as, hydro uh, as hydrogen atom. So, uh, so in that case, if you compare one oxygen atom with one twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom, there will be 16. If you compare the mass of, uh, uh, of a magnesium atom with one over 12 the mass of a carbon-12 atom, there will be 24. Instead of 24 over 12 or 16 over 12, which uh, in a lot of cases is going to be a decimal number. So every time when we compare carbon-12 atom, we have to compare it with 1 over 12 of the mass of a carbon-12 atom, which essentially we are actually comparing with the mass of a, of a hydrogen atom. Okay, the AR for, for aluminium in the periodic table. In the periodic table, aluminium is AL. It's actually AL27. 13. So this is the AR. This is the number of proton. This is the number of proton plus neutron, which is uh, also the same as the mass number or the AR. So for aluminum, it is 27. What it means is that one aluminum atom is 27 times heavier than 1 over 12 of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Likewise for oxygen atom, 16. So one oxygen atom is 16 times heavier than 1 over 12 of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Now for AR, since it is relative atomic mass, relative means compare. When you compare something, there is no unit. So the unit of AR is no, there is no unit. Now in the periodic table, you can find that AR of some, uh, some elements are actually uh, not in a whole number. In fact, chlorine is the only one. Why? Because chlorine exists in more than one isotope. What is isotope? Atoms of the same element with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. So isotope essentially, it is like twins. Uh, they have the same number of protons, but the number of but twins, uh, they, are, they, are, they are from the same parents, but then they are actually slightly different. And in the case of chemical, the slightly difference would be in terms of the number of neutrons. Okay, let's look at chlorine. How do you get the AR for chlorine, which is not a whole number, which is a decimal? So for chlorine, 75% of the chlorine exists in chlorine 35. So this 35 is the mass number, just like the carbon 12 just now. Carbon 12, uh, later we'll talk about it, this 12 is actually the mass number. So for chlorine, there are two types of chlorine, there are two chlorine isotopes. One is chlorine 35, the other one is chlorine uh, 37. 75% of chlorine exists in chlorine 35. 75% in matter uh, is uh, is represented by 75 divided by 100, which is 0 0.75. So 0 0.75 times 35, and then 25% is 25 over 100, which is 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 times 37. So these two number we, we uh, add up together, we get 35.5. So this is how you calculate the AR of 
uh, of an element existing in more than one isotope. I repeat, this is how you calculate the AR of elements existing in more than one isotope. Okay. A second example is carbon. In fact, chlorine is not the only element that exists in more than one isotope. A lot of other elements, they exist in more than one isotope. So the second example is carbon. So carbon exists in a mixture of three isotopes, not only two, three isotopes. So there is chlorine 12, okay, I mean a, a carbon 12, which is 99%, and 1% of the carbon exists in carbon 13, and trace amount exists in carbon 14. Trace amount means that negligible amount. Okay, so we can actually ignore this carbon-14. So if we do the calculation, we get 12.01, which is very, very close to 12. And that is why for carbon, we don't... Uh, because 0 0.01 uh, is very insignificant uh, compared... It's, I mean, the difference between 12.01 and 12 is very, very small. So we round it uh, to the nearest to 12. So in the periodic table, you can see that uh, all elements their AR is a whole number except chlorine. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that uh, all other elements do not have isotope. Actually, most elements have isotope, just that there is a dominant isotope. In this case, the dominant isotope is 99%. So the dominant isotope make it in such a way that the calculated a, uh, AR, uh, the uh, decimal is very is negligible. So we can actually ignore the decimal. For chlorine, there is, a, a do, there is a dominant isotope, but the dominant isotope, the percentage is actually not very huge. It's 75%. So unless you have a dominant isotope whereby the percentage is uh, like 99% or 98%, then the calculated AR would be a whole number. Then you can round it up to the whole number. Otherwise, you have to, you have to um, take the decimal point into the decimal number into consideration. Okay? So these two calculations, both carbon and chlorine have isotope, but chlorine, the AR is a decimal number. Carbon, the AR is not a decimal number, it's a whole number. Why? Because there is a dominant isotope with a very, very, with a very, very high percentage. All right. So this is a calculation of AR for elements with more than one isotope. Okay, the next page of the mind map, it's about relative molecular mass. Relative molecular mass, or, or MR, is actually the same as relative atomic mass. Just that relative molecular mass is for molecule. The word molecule uh, basically means that the substance is a covalent substance. Non-metal combined with non-metal. Okay, so instead of atom, we change it to molecule. So it's exactly the same. I mean, it's uh, not exactly the same. Very, very similar. Okay, how do, you cal how do you calculate the MR? By adding up the relative atomic mass of each atom. So, for example, MR for carbon dioxide is 44. What it means is that one carbon dioxide molecule is 44 times heavier than one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So, relative molecular mass is basically for covalent substance. How about relative formula mass? Relative formula mass, this term, is for ionic substance. The short form is the same, MR and MR. The short form is the same, but um, the, the terms is slightly different. This is molecule, this is formula. So relative formula mass, same as relative molecular mass, except that relative molecular mass is for elements or compounds existing in molecular form. That means covalent substance, non-metal combined with non-metal. Relative formula mass would be for ionic substance, metal combined with non-metal. So an example, all these are ionic substances, metal and non-metal. So the MR, the way to calculate the MR, uh, the relative molecular mass, and the way you calculate uh, relative uh, mole uh, uh, formula mass is the same. Just add up all the, the individual AR. Okay? So this page, uh, basically nothing much. Just that this is for covalent substance, this is for ionic substance. The method of calculation is the same, adding up all the AR.
Okay, in any chemical reaction, the understanding of how the particles interact is very crucial. So chemical, for example, A react with B. Uh, chemical A react with chemical B. In order to understand how chemical A react with uh, chemical B, we have to understand how the particles in chemical A react with the particles with uh, chemical B. So you have to count the number of particles. So counting the particles in the chemical is very very important in understanding chemical reaction. Uh, so there must be a unit to uh, for the number of particles in the chemical. So the unit is the mole. So mole is a unit for the amount of chemicals. Okay, it's a unit unit for amount of chemicals is mole. So mole is it's just like another unit. For example, kilogram is the SI unit for mass. So mole is the SI unit for the amount of chemicals. And one mole of any substance has six times ten to about twenty three particles. And the particles, this word particles can mean atoms, molecules, or ions, depending on what this substance is. If this substance is a metal, okay, the particles means atom, because metal is basically consists of atoms. If the if the if the substance, if the substance here is a noble gas, also it means uh, I mean the particles, the word the particle means atom. Now if the substance is a covalent substance, then the particle means molecule. Okay, so uh, what this particle mean, okay, whether or not this particle means atom, molecule, or ions depends on what kind of substance is it. And this number 6 times 10 to power 23 is also known as Avogadro's number. That's the name of the scientist. Okay, and this Avogadro number is very important because it represents the number of particles in one mole of any substance. So if we want to find out how many mole, then we have to divide the number of particles of the substance by this Avogadro number. Now there are a few examples here. How many atoms are there in one mole of neon? So first of all, you need to know this neon, what kind of substance is this? This neon is group 0 or group 8 in the periodic table. Okay, neon is actually here. Neon, neon, where are you? Neon is here. So neon is group zero, and you know that all these elements, all these group zero elements, they are all normal gases. Normal gases meaning that they exist in monatomic. They are all exist in atom. Okay, so one mole of neon would have this many neon atoms. Okay, the question asks you how many atoms, so there will be this many. How about two moles of iron? And iron, what is iron? Iron is a metal, right? So all metals exist in atom. So two moles of iron would have two times six times 10 to about 23, would have this many iron metals. How about one mole of oxygen? Uh, oxygen, oxygen is a what? It's a covalent substance. Oxygen, covalent substance molecules so it means that one mole of oxygen would have six times ten to about 23 oxygen molecule now oxygen molecule molecule is o2 so each this is oxygen molecule each oxygen molecule how many atoms are there each oxygen molecule there are two oxygen atoms so you have to multiply by the two here okay so without the two Without the two, one mole of oxygen would have this many, 6 times 10 to about 23, oxygen molecule. But the question wants atom. Each oxygen, so you have to ask yourself, each oxygen molecule, how many atoms are there? Two, so times two. Now likewise for two mole of carbon dioxide. Two mole of carbon dioxide would have 6 times 10 to about 23, carbon dioxide molecule. Because carbon dioxide is a covalent substance. Carbon dioxide is a covalent substance, so molecule. So it would have 2 times 6 times 10 to power 23 carb, uh, carbon dioxide molecule. Okay? But each carbon dioxide molecule, carbon dioxide is CO2. Each carbon dioxide molecule would have 2 oxygen atom, 1 carbon atom. So total 3 atoms. Therefore, you have to times 3. 
okay? 2 mole of carbon dioxide, 2 times 6 times 10 to the power 23 carbon dioxide molecules. And each carbon dioxide molecules, there are 3 atoms. So you have to times 1 or 3. So that would give you 3 times 6 times 10 to the power 23 atoms. Now, how about this? How many more is this mole? Uh, uh, is this uh, number of molecules? So, in order to find how many moles, it must be the number of particles divided by the Avogadro number. So that would give you two moles. Now, likewise, I can uh, give you another example. Let's say one mole of uh, NaCl. Okay, one mole of NaCl. How many? ions are there okay NaCl is an ionic substance so one mole of NaCl would have 6 times 10 to the power 23 NaCl okay how many ions and you know that NaCl consists of sodium ion and chloride ion so each NaCl each unit of NaCl would have two units of ions so that means uh, the answer will be 2 times 6 times 10 to the power 23, which is 1.2 times 10 to the power 24 ions. So 1 mole of NaCl would have 1.2 times 10 to the power 24 ions. Okay. How about 2 mole of magnesium chloride? Two mole of magnesium chloride. So the question is, how many ions? How many ions are there in two mole of magnesium chloride? So two mole of magnesium chloride, same thing. Two times six times ten to about twenty three magnesium chloride. Two mole, one mole is six times ten to about twenty three. So two mole, two times six times ten to about twenty three magnesium chloride. Now each magnesium chloride, they are. 1 magnesium ion, 2 chloride ion. Total, 3 ions. So it would have 3 times 2 times 6 times 10 to about 23 ions. It's just this number times a 3. That would give you the total number of ions. Why times 3? Because each MgCl2, there are 3 ions inside. That's why this 3 is this 3. Okay, and of course you have to do the calculation and express your answer in a standard form. Okay, the next part is about molar mass. So molar mass, what is molar mass? Mass of one mole of a substance and the unit is gram per mole. Molar mass is actually the same as the AR. You can look at uh, the AR, the MR. Just look at it, carbon, AR or MR, AR of carbon is 12, molar mass is mass of 1 mole, which is 1 times 12, which is 12. And the number of particles, 6 times 10 to about 23. For oxygen gas, oxygen gas is O2, so the MR is 32, 16 times 2 is 32, molar mass would be 32. So AR, uh, AR or MR and molar mass, they are actually the same. Except that for molar mass, there is a unit. The unit is gram per mole. Okay? So molar mass is the same as the AR or MR of a substance in gram per mole. They are the same. Except that this one has no unit. This one has unit. Now, from the diagram here in, te in your textbook, you can see that all these substances, they are all one mole each. But they all have different masses. So one mode of any of uh, uh, different uh, substances have different masses, but the number of particles will be the same. So for example, copper, this 64 gram of copper is actually one mole of copper. So it would have 6 times 10 to about 23 particles. This uh, glass of water is one mole of water inside. It would have 6 times 10 to about 23 molecule, water molecule. This one uh, is 6 times 10 to about 23 water molecule this one is 6 times 10 to the power 23 copper atoms so all of them have the same particles they all have different masses they all have one mole one mole each 
different masses, same number of particles.